Hello again. My name is Jeffrey Davis. This is Radio Entrepreneurs. And welcome back. And uh, I want to welcome everybody who continues to join our ever-growing entrepreneurial network. We know the next guest is going to join it as well. Uh, another entrepreneur, uh, and I do consider attorneys entrepreneurs, sort of self-employed within a bigger employment concept. Uh, it's Larry Casey from the law firm of Davis, Malm, and D'Augustine. And we're going to talk today about startup employment law. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, so tell us, what's going on with startup employment law that we need to know about? So uh, basically, what I think when a lot of people are starting up a new business, they need to be aware of particular uh, employment issues that might impact them. A lot of people are concerned about cost, concerned about um, how to cut corners uh, when you're first starting because you don't have enough money to no start money with employees. Here. Exactly. Yep. But you got to be careful there because there are a lot of issues that uh, you need to address even when you're a small company, two or three people. So one big issue is if you're in business with yourself or if you've got a partner or a couple of partners, what do you do about their ownership interests amongst you? And, and is there a way to the extent you need to break up at some point, what happens with those ownership interests? Well, uh, you know what? I, it's funny. Can I just jump in right on that point? Sure. Being a management consultant and actually have owned uh, 10 companies and most of them partnerships in some form, uh, all firms eventually change ownership. Absolutely. And, 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 and the relationships <coughs> always change over time. They it's do. Not, it's not a marriage. No. Well, I, the way I just usually describe it with people, because a lot of times you're talking about non-compete agreements and restrictive covenants also right. with regard to employees, is that when you're first going into the job, it's the uh, honeymoon. And right. you are going to have a marriage, but it's going to end. Whether Let's it's go death, make a business. We're going to get rich, Larry. Yep. That's, <laughs> that's how people start companies. Exactly. I have an idea. Let's get rich right. together. And everybody thinks it's all going to work great. But right. Sometimes it does. And we're going to love each other forever. Exactly. It's 50-50, buddy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sometimes it works that way. Sometimes it doesn't. And most of the time it doesn't. No. A lot of times they do break and up. And you have to prepare for that. You do. You do. And you got you to set up ownership interest that way to try to structure it such that either you earn your ownership interest over time or you have to convey it back to the company for, you know, some money or fair market value or that type of thing. So that's an important point. And can I just add something to that just for the sake of discussion, just because sure. it's an area that I get involved with a lot as a consultant. So many times I'll read shareholders agreements and I think to myself, oh, boy, <laughs> because they told the, uh, the, the attorney this needs to be cheap. We're just starting the business. I think in the if it's possible, shouldn't these agreements be ri written so that if w in the case of a transition, that the process is laid out ahead of time for negotiation for the transition? Absolutely. What it's be best to do is either have a formula or you set it up that it's fair market value or uh, depending how you're acquiring those interests. Sometimes you acquire them vested over time. And if you don't get within to a certain period of time, it's forfeited completely. Um, so you haven't paid anything in. You got some sweat equity in there, and that's the other, you know, sensitive issue. Depending on the type of company, if you've contributed uh, uh, IP, or if you've contributed something else to the business, you should have some ownership interest there. But um, the individuals who are maintaining the business, if somebody decides to leave, needs a way to get that ownership back so they can give it to somebody else who they want to join the firm. Larry, if somebody <laughs> wants to talk to you about startup employment uh, topics, how would they find you? Uh, the easiest would be go to a website, uh, davismom.com, um, and uh, click on attorneys, and you'll see my lovely face uh, in picture there. 